Today in our 2012 Ram 3500, we'll be having a look at and installing the B&W Custom Underbed Installation Kit for B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches, part number BWG NRK 1313-5W. This 5th Wheel Installation Kit is designed to let you install your B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches. The adapters are part numbers BWR VK 3500 or part number BWRVK 3400. The underbed design of the kit allows for full truck bed access and when you're ready it's under five minutes to convert your empty truck bed into a fifth wheel hitch. We'll start off by unlocking our B&W hitch and installing our fifth wheel adapter. We have ours pre-assembled but you can adjust the uprights here depending on your truck and trailer combination. At this point, the hitch is ready to attach to a trailer. There's a little clip here that you can release. Basically, it's a safety pin. Then you swing the handle out and you watch the jaws open. You're ready to back onto your trailer. Once you're secure onto your trailer, you can reinstall the clip. And since this fifth wheel installation kit doubles as a gooseneck hitch, when you're not towing your fifth wheel, you can remove it. This frees up the hole to reinsert the hitch ball when you need it. Now we'll go ahead and show you how to install the custom underbed kit for the BMW Companion fifth wheel trailer hitches. Now we're going to mark where we're going to drill our 4 inch diameter hole in the bed of our truck. It's very critical when we do these measurements that we do not measure from the end of the tailgate, but we measure from the end of the bed itself. Now you can find these measurements in the instructions. Make sure you pick the right ones for your particular bed length of your truck. Okay, I already have our spot marked out here. So I'm just going to drill a pilot hole to start right in the center. Okay, with our pilot hole made, we now use our hole saw and enlarge it to the final size. Right now, it's a good idea to take some paint, it's either spray form or touch up paint or paint marker, whatever you have, and go along the edge and around where you cut your hole. This way, you don't have to worry about any rust happening over time. Now, since our truck is white and we don't have a spray in bed liner, we can't exactly just use black spray paint, so I'm going to use some clear coat instead. You can use this on any color, it doesn't matter, and it'll prevent rust from occurring in the future. All right, now some trucks may or may not have some variation of a wheel liner. Our truck is a dually and does have a wheel liner and has a removable center section right here. We need to remove this center section. In order to do that, we have two plastic push pin fasteners at each corner. The way these work, you unscrew the center section with a Phillips screwdriver, you pull the center section out, pull back, and the clip will just release. Sometimes you can just pull the whole clip out. Once you have that out, you can just grab your panel here and lift up and it'll unhook itself. Okay, we went ahead and removed that panel on the driver's side as well. Now on our passenger side, I went ahead and made the mark around the large diameter hole in our bed flange right here that we'll need to trim out. You can cut this out with a grinder, a cutoff wheel, a rotary tool. You can possibly even cut it out with a pair of 10 steps. It is a little thick though, so you might, if you have a good pair, you might be able to do it. I'm gonna use a rotary tool. Now this is our front rail. You'll see that we have several threaded holes in it. It's a good idea to run a bolt in and out of it a few times to help clean up any powder coating that may be on the threads. That way when you raise your center section on up, it bolts into this rail nice and smoothly. You'll also notice at the end, we have a hole that's further towards one end of the rail. You wanna have this hole closest to the bed of the truck, so it's gonna be facing up just like this. So we'll slide our rail in position go in sideways like this, go across our frame rails, and once it's over both frame rails, we can flip it on up. But now with our hole facing towards the bed of the truck, we'll slide this on forward. Okay, this is our rear rail. This is gonna be the top side of it right here. We're gonna insert this at an upside down V angle. These slotted holes will be facing vertical. 
once we have it oriented the proper direction and they'll be facing the front of the truck. So we'll take our rail and slide it in position over our frame. And slide it on back. Now we find ourselves underneath the truck. As you can see, we've already removed our spare tire. You don't have to do this, but it does give you a little bit more room to work. Okay, this is our rear rail. Here's our slotted holes that we were talking about. We'll take one of our half inch bolts and a flat washer and we'll stick it through that hole. And we'll do the same for the other two holes in the center of our rear rail. Okay, this is the bottom side of our center section of our gooseneck. We want the offset here facing towards the front of the truck and our latch mechanism here towards the driver's side. We'll raise this up over the exhaust and have an extra set of hands with us to help hold it in place while we secure it to the rear rail. We'll use a lock washer and a nut. Get one started, we'll get the other two started as well. Okay, now we'll take one of our half inch bolts, lock washer and a flat washer, and we'll bolt our center section to our front rail. Get one started, and we'll do the same for the other four. Okay, now we'll take a bolt, lock washer, flat washer, and we'll use that to bolt our side bracket here to our front rail through this hole. Let's get it started a few turns. That way we can still have room to move our rail around as necessary. Now we'll take a bolt, go through our side plate into our back rail, place on a flat washer, a lock washer, and then a nut. Just get it started just like that. And that gives us room to move as necessary. Okay, now we'll take our pull wire and go through the forward hole here in our frame and our side bracket. And we'll move our, the pull wire onto the back of the vehicle. Okay, just in front of our rear spring hanger, we have a hole in the bottom of our frame and that's where our pull wire came out. We'll take one of our spacer blocks here Stick it onto the wire, insert it in the frame, and we'll thread on our carriage bolt to the pull wire. With that threaded on, we'll push that into the frame. So I'll we'll take our pull wire and pull the bolt on through. And we'll remove our pull wire now. Okay, now I'll place on a lock washer. And we'll thread on a nut. Right now the two holes in the back of our side frame bracket here, those are going to sit above and below our frame and we'll secure the frame bracket around the frame with a U-bolt. We loosened up our back hardware here to the rail just temporarily so our u-bolt will slide on through now i'll place on a lock washer and then a nut onto both sides of our u-bolt and replace the hardware for our back rail all right on our driver's side it's a little bit different we have a ground cable here that has a 10 millimeter nut holding it onto the frame. We're gonna remove this nut and pull this ground wire off for the time being. And just stick it up here, out of the way. Additionally, we have a 13 millimeter bolt right here, which holds our parking brake cable onto the frame. We'll remove that and swing the cable bracket down and away from the frame. Okay, now we'll bolt our frame bracket to our front rail. Okay, now we'll bolt our frame bracket to our rear rail, just like we did on the passenger side.
Now on the inside of our driver's side frame, it's different than the passenger side because we have a bunch of wires that run along the inside edge. We wanna make sure we don't pinch these wires with our U-bolt when we install it. So we're gonna take a trim panel tool here and temporarily pop these wiring harnesses loose from our frame. Okay, with these popped loose, we have adequate clearance now to get our U-bolt in. Bolt slides in position behind them. And into our bracket. Place on our lock washers and our nuts. All right, now we'll take our pull wire, go through the hole in our bracket and the hole in our frame, and we'll work it towards the back of the truck. All right, just like on our passenger side, our pull wire comes out the hole just in front of our rear spring hanger. Slide on our spacer block and thread on our carriage bolt. And we'll push it on in. And we'll pull our bolt on through now. Remove the pull wire. Place on our lock washer and our nut. All right, now we'll swing our parking brake cable back on up, insert it back into its original position, and re-secure it with the original bolt. And we'll snug that bolt back on up. Okay, our ground cable. We'll pull it through this slot right here. Stick it back over the stud and re-secure it with the original 10 millimeter nut. And we'll tighten it back down. All right, now we'll clip all of our wiring harnesses back to the frame. All right, now we'll tighten up our hardware that holds our center section to our rails. We'll need a three quarter inch socket for this and a three quarter inch wrench. All right, this one, you're not gonna be able to get a ratchet and a socket on terribly easy, so you can have to tighten it up by hand as much as possible first. All right, now we'll tighten down the bolts that hold our side plates to the frame. Do our U-bolts as well. And now we'll tighten down the bolts that hold our rails to the side plate. And we'll repeat the same tightening process on our driver's side. And now we'll torque all of our hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. It's critical to point out that our U-bolts do get a lower torque spec than any of the hardware in the kit. All right, now we need to drill the holes for our safety chain loops. Now we have two different locations where we could drill through. You wanna pick the one which is gonna be in the lower part of your bed corrugation, which in our case is going to be the one closest to our gooseneck ball. So we'll take a drill bit and drill right through the center of the hole and through the bed. And we'll do the same for the other loop. All right, now we find ourselves in the top of the bed. Here's where our pilot holes came through for our safety chain loops. We'll use a step bit to enlarge these. We're enlarging these to the size indicated in the instructions. Now, just like we did for the hole for the gooseneck head, we'll spray some clear coat in so you don't have to worry about rust. All right, with our clear coat dry, we'll drop down our U-bolts. And we'll secure them underneath with our hardware. Okay, now we'll take one of our springs here. We have a small end and a big end. The small end will face down. We'll slide that over our safety chain U-bolt and screw on one of our lock nuts. We'll take another one 
and put it on the other side of the U-bolt in the same way. And then we'll tighten these nuts down so they're flush with the end of our U-bolt. And we'll repeat the same process for the other safety chain U-bolt. Okay, now we'll take our ball release handle. We'll stick the handle in through this hole right here and work it over our frame. And we'll position it to the front side of the square hole. Take a carriage bolt, stick it through the square hole and in through the handle. And then we'll screw on a flange nut to the carriage bolt on the other side thus securing the handle. And we'll tighten that down with a half inch wrench. Okay, now we'll reinstall our side panels. Okay, our driver's side panel, we need to make a notch right in this area here so our handle will be able to operate properly. I'll just use our rotary tool again. You can use a utility knife. That notched, you can just grab it, break it off. Now we'll take our panel, hang it back in place, and you'll see we have plenty of operation room for it now. And that completes our installation of the B&W Custom Underbed Installation Kit for B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches, part number BWG and RK1313-5W on our 2012 Ram 30. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.